It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Okay, basketball fans, with me, Kenny the Jet Smith, Shaquille O'Neal, I'm Ernie Johnson. You're watching 2K Sports, but you know that already. Tonight, it'll be the New York Knicks going up against the Boston Celtics. Well, for Boston, this is a team they played pretty well against last season, going 3-1. They'll look to keep that edge tonight. And Robert Williams, someone will be watching tonight. Shaq, he plays with an edge in everything he does. Yeah, physical, intimidating. Does he make a face like the face you're making no, right now when you're not. talking about physical, it? Physical, intimidating, the rebounding and shot blocking are already there. Well, he's evolving offensively. That's what I do like about him as well. He wasn't a five-star recruit where everybody was knocking down his door to get into his house. But he said, I'm going to put that work in. And he did. But everyone knows his name now. Yeah. Now let's send it down to Kevin Harlan. Everybody knows his name, too. Hello and welcome, everyone, to another exciting edition of the NBA on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan along with Greg Anthony and Brett Berry. David Aldridge will be reporting from the sidelines. The New York Knicks come into this one after a win against the Nets in Brooklyn. I tell you what, uh, how efficient they were at scoring the basketball, especially for an away game, that was impressive. Yeah, it was almost robotic, Greg, in this one. They filtered out all the noise and came in razor-sharp precision on the offensive end. And as things get ready to roll, let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's on the sideline. David? Well, guys, Kristaps Porzingis has drawn comparisons to Dirk Nowitzki, and it sounds like Dirk is a fan. He says of Porzingis, he's long, athletic, tough. He has touch. He can put it on the floor. He is for real. Kevin? And Porzingis, D.A., a good three inches taller than Dirk. He's a very unique talent for sure. Tonight, two teams that like to slow it down a little bit, playing that half-court ball. Brent, we don't get to see that as often as we kind of have in the past. Well, and, and that's okay, Kevin, because coaches who have a roster that's full of guys who they feel like physically can take advantage of defenses wearing down, or they're looking at their opponent as somebody who's Ready, not really Ready. patient defensively and wants to play through a 24-second possession, then if you slow it down, you might have more opportunities for post-ups, cuts and late baskets because of defensive breakdown coaches knowing what they've got to work with well you got to know your personnel yep and now the opening lineup for Boston Irving at point with Brown to his side there at the backcourt Horford is out there with Tatum and it's Hayward in at the small forward position you have got to box out Horford on the glass given his size and his strength nice persistence by him to grab the O rebound and so it's the Celtics getting on the board first or kicks to Neely Kina. Lock at six. Here's Porzingis. A 10-footer finds the target. Oh, in between game for Porzingis. That one's on target. Irving passes to Tatum. They set the pick. Hayward on the wing. Pass to Tatum. Over Hardaway. No good off the front iron. Not a lot of defense there. You can't afford to let guys shoot freely from the mid-range. You're not going to miss those all that often. Oh, and there's the alley-oop. And out of bounds as the Celtics gain possession. Some turnovers necessary. That one, not so much. The Celtics have gone one of three from the field to start this one so far. Irving kicks to Horford. Tatum drives in and slam dunk by Tatum. Sensational pass by Horford on that play. Terrific job whipping the ball over to the open man. Now here's Burke. He's covered closely. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up. And last year for the Knicks, a bit of a throwback offense. First in the league in two-point attempts and second to last in the league in three-point attempts. We'll see if the new coaching staff changes some of those numbers. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. Now 
that one is off. And talking about the Knicks last year, definitely one of the bigger teams in the NBA. Hey, interesting to look down at their scoring last year as their top four scorers were either centers or forwards. And that's a little bit unusual in today's game where uh, most of the impacts coming from your point guard or, or a wing player. Not the case for the Knicks, so they're looking for some backcourt help. So he comes up empty, missing both. The Celtics have gone two for four from the field so far today. And it's Brown missing. Porzingis against Tatum. They grab their own miss. And two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the contact. It goes on Jason Tatum. Well, Porzingis in the early part of his career has had some phenomenal first halves of seasons in the second half has faded. You really just want to see a complete year from Chris Stapps Porzingis where he can dominate. Shoot two. And the first one at the line is good. And we talk so much about the offense. Porzingis gives you Brent. How about the defensive side of his game? Well, I think he's learning a little bit more about uh, position and space. He moves his feet decently well for his size, uh, but he's getting a better understanding of the guys in this league that he's seeing on a nightly basis. And, of course, we'll always talk about trying to gain more and more strength. Such a big bonus to have a big guy that can step up to the free throw line and knock down shots. So many guys struggle from there. Pick by Horford. There's the screen. Now here's Irving. D right on him to the paint. Porzingis with the block. Well, you can see Porzingis taking some pride right now on the defensive end of the floor, taking care of the shooter with his long wingspan that time. I give the defense a C plus on that possession, but still, I I'm sure he's upset he missed. Brown dishes to Irving. Porzingis with the block. Neely Kina passes to Hardaway, and then Hardaway with the dunk. Can't leave anyone uncovered around Neely Kina. He is so adept at exploiting situations like that. Boston trailing. And now, the first time out called here for Boston. One of the interesting storylines of this young season, Brett Barry, the surprising early development of a couple rookies in the league. Early development of rookies is a, a great thing for a young team because all of a sudden, somebody's taken the reins. And I think coaches always appreciate when a rookie comes in, he does the work in the offseason, all that work starts to pay off. But now, rookies tend to start looking towards somebody else, or the team starts looking towards that young player as somebody who may be able to handle and carry the weight of the franchise for a little while. I love the three-point shooting of Irving. Excellent at dialing it in from deep. And you've got to respect his ring. Here's Neil Aquino. He's coming off a 13-point game against Brooklyn. Shoots over Brown. First shot, first basket. He's out of the blocks fast. And that's all you can do. Tip your cap to Neil Aquino, a hard guy to frustrate. Outside Irving. A floater. Count it. His second make in four attempts. And defensively, this is a nightmare. He's already on a roll. I love his will, his take charge attitude, the aggressiveness, all of that showing up here in the first. Here's Neil Aquino. He kicks to Cantor. Over Horford. Cantor's shot is off. The Celtics have gone four for nine from the field to start this game off. To the inside, Hayward, and Hayward at the stuff. And how about that floor awareness there from Tatum? It does a good job of scanning the court and getting the ball to the open man. And there's the call on Gordon Hayward. That's his first foul. And it's the Knicks with the ball. They trail by three. Porzingis kicks to Neely Kina. Back to Porzingis. Six to shoot. Over Tatum. And the shot goes in from Chris Stapps. Porzingis. Porzingis has got his second basket of the night. The Celtics have gotten five of ten shots to drop in this game so far. Right at the 50% mark. Horford with a screen on Porzingis. Picked by Horford. 
And there's the defensive three second call. The Celtics shooting their first free throw of the evening. And their numbers from the line last season, they're good, just not great. About 77% as a team. And he shows the focus there, nails the technical. And with all the drama, Greg, that has followed Irving the past few seasons, he reached out to Kobe Bryant for some guidance. And just like Irving and LeBron had to go their own ways, so did Kobe and Shaq. Very few players know what it's like to be in a situation like Irving. But, but Kobe's won. And Kobe gave Irving the confidence to not be afraid of standing out in his career decisions. And so far, it's paid off handsomely. That's a hard-nosed play from Hardaway, absorbing contact and not taking no for an answer. Tatum with it, now guarded by Porzingis. The pass to Irving. Let's it go from 11. And yep, finally drops after rolling around the rim. Irving's got eight. No, right now he is locked in. He's getting great shots and he's burning the D in a variety of ways. There's a screen by Cantor. Here's Persingas. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. It's going to be on Kyrie Irving. For New York, they have split their free throws right down the middle so far. They're two for two. Yeah, and 79% from the line as a team two a shots. season ago. Pretty reliable in that regard. That free throw good from Porzingis. Porzingis making his return after ACL surgery last season. It's just nice to see him back. I mean, you remember that injury? Just took the wind out of the Knicks and, and their fans. However, it set their direction as they took a more long-term developmental approach. And the missed free throws starting to be an issue. Horford kicks to Tatum. Pass to Irving from past the arc. Knicks with the rebound. Here's Burke. 14 points from him the last game against the Nets in Brooklyn. Singus passes to Burke. Hardaway for three. It's hauled in by Brown. The Celtics with the lead. Stripped it away. Passes to Burke. To the middle. Shoots. And he makes the bucket. Drew contact and gets the whistle, too. Nice strength shown there by Ennis Cantor, showing real muscle. Whenever the defense is trying to get physical with him, he has an answer. And sometimes it seems the age of interior scoring big men has come and gone. Ennis Cantor, one of the rare big men who can dominate a game offensively in the paint, great hands and the strength to create space. One shot. And you talk about Canner's inside game, but he's got a solid jump shot. That looks very comfortable all the way out to 20 feet. I think before long, we may see him add a three-point shot to his repertoire. Now, here's Tatum. He had 16 points in the win against the Raptors in Toronto. A lot of those plays came off tremendous hustle. He was committed to ripping down as many rebounds as he possibly could in this one. The Knicks have gone 6 of 10 from the field in this ballgame. There's a screen by Cantor. Right side, Berzingis. Pass to Knox. But they'll get another chance. Back to Berzingis. Moves back up. And he gets it to go. Hitting off the back of the rim. Cantor's got his second basket of the night. And another momentum shift. These teams going back and forth all night. Yeah, which team's going to find some consistency first? Neither one can pull away. The shot's good from Irving. I love the pace he's playing with, letting his offense come to him naturally and then building upon this lead for his team. Screen by Porzingis. Out to the right wing. Now the pass to Knox. And right away, they match it with a three-pointer of their own. And the Knicks lead by two. Irving kicks to Baines. They set the screen. Pass to Tatum. 
Hayward, left side. And he sinks that one, hitting the back of the rim on the way in. Hayward's got the game tied up here for the Celtics. New York's gone, one of three from beyond the arc so far in the game. Moutier passes to Persingas. And a fast break now for the Celtics. Here's Hayward. And the rebound goes to the Knicks. Cantor's got four rebounds in this game. Down low. Here's Lee outside. Hayward grabs the board. Austin's gone two of four from beyond the arc to start the game. With some arc, the Knicks pull it in. Cantor's got five rebounds tonight. Lee against Smart. Now here's Moutier. D right on him. Two open that time. Made it look too easy. Ten points for Perzingis. Well, the O looks unstoppable tonight, especially because of that guy. He's just torching them. And Baines kicks to Tatum. They set the pick. Back to Baines. Banked in off the glass. Baines has got his first two points. Yeah, and Tatum's passing ability really makes him a problem in that pick and roll. It, no wasted motion. Always slicing and dicing the defense. For the finish. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time. So he'll shoot two right here. And when the Celtics traded out of the first overall pick in 2017, you know, many Greg thought they were settling for Jason Tatum for team needs, but he might be the best overall player in that draft. Listen, the Celtics said they would have been fine taking Tatum first overall, and I believe him. I mean, Tatum looks like he could be a superstar very early in his career and does everything at a high level and is already a terrific shooter from deep. Plus, he just has a poise and an air about his game that speaks of superstar. Talk about what it means to be a good teammate, Brent. You've uh, played with, with good ones. You've played with bad ones. I've always thought you were team first when you play. Well, I appreciate that, Kevin. There's, there's just a... Uh you know, an idea about what it is that you can contribute to the team. I think you always have to accentuate those ideals. Your approach on a daily basis has to be consistent. And if you're a starting player, it's it's one mentality. And if you're somebody that plays off the bench, you have to come to practice every day to push the guy that's in front of you and wait for your opportunity. But most of the time, it's that kind of consistency with which you come to work and the attitude of making sure that I want to make any kind of contribution I can for our team's success. That usually is a pretty good formula for a good teammate. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Knocked loose. And the ball travels out of bounds. It was last touched by Smart. And where the shot's been coming from tonight? Here's a look broken down by paint, mid-range, and three-point shot attempt so far for the Knicks. And you can see how important those inside baskets are. This is a team that loves to work the ball inside, whether the entry pass or off of a drive. They like to feed on those high percentage looks. Now, here's Moutier. He's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. 137 left in the first quarter of the game. And there's the bucket from Tatum. And I tell you what, Tatum is proving to be an all-around scorer of the basketball. He can do it all. Robinson, a screen on Rozier. There's a screen by Robinson. Lasagna, the pass to Knox. Shot to stop the run. Morris with the rebound. He just can't find the bottom of the net right now. He's looking frustrated. This quarter has been a bit of a nightmare for him. Tatum kicks to Smart. Ogier the pass to Tice. Six on the shot clock. Out of hand on it. Lee outside. Back to Moutier. New York no good that time either. Last game for Boston they picked up the W against the Raptors. And it's Rozier missing. And somehow, some way, he couldn't get that one to fall from in between. Got to take advantage of the weak defense when you can. 
fires from 14. No good on the shot. A bit long that time. Well, I'll tell you what. He's going to buy himself a ticket to the bench if he keeps shooting it like that. He has been putrid here this quarter. Tatum kicks to Smart. Just one second between the shot clock and game clock. Back to Tatum. Over his own yard. Tatum's shot is off. And that does it for the first quarter. Boston on top, finishing the quarter on a tremendous 8-0 run. Let's take a quick break now, and then it's on to the second quarter after this. Frank Nielikina has established himself as a legit defender. He spoke about his mindset. Defense is 80% of will and 20% ability. So you try to stop the player in front of you and try to deny him to score the basket. That's just the challenge, and that's what I love in uh, this part of the game. A young player with an advanced understanding of defense, and his length gives him an edge. And his defense is something he enjoys. If he can put it all together at both ends, he's a player you can build around. And the first quarter is in the books. Second about ready to get underway. And the Celtics guys, what jumps out to you, stats wise? Getting high percentage looks, wearing down that defense on the inside. Such a great way to get yourself into an offensive groove and build up some early confidence. On the court for the Celtics, second quarter underway. Marcus Morris is out there with Tatum. Then there's Smart. Then there's Terry Rozier. And it's Tice in at the five, roaming the paint. Celtics making a switch here. Horford's checked in. On defense, the Celtics. High point lead, the biggest of the game. The inside, guarded by Smart. Lee, that's good. Lee's got the opening field goal of the second quarter for New York. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with David Aldridge. Well, guys, Al Horford is a multiple all-star. And if you count his stats, you miss what he brings to the table. When you factor in his passing, his defense, his efficiency, he does all the things that help you win. Coach Brad Stevens said, Al Horford averaging 15 points a game for you is like other guys averaging 27. Kevin? The definition of a pro. Terrific guy. Thank you, D.A. Celtics leading by three. And a tremendous opportunity for David Fisdale to re-energize his coaching career. Just that short stint he had in Memphis. He's a smart guy, a ton of charisma, which, of course, the New York fans are going to react to and uh, try to rework this roster and find some talent and push forward. And now here's Rozier, the fast break chance. And the call will be against Emmanuel Moutier. That'll be his second foul of the game. A different look for New York. Tim Hardaway Jr.'s checked in for Knox. Neil Aquina comes in for Lee. And Trey Burke subbed in for Moutier. Jalen Brown's checked in for the Celtics. And when it came to hiring Fisdale, the Knicks went so far as to contact their former coach, Pat Riley. Yeah, Pat, a bit of Knicks royalty with his success in the Big Apple, said this about Fisdale, that he's got a great mind and that he'll be mentally prepared for everything New York throws at him. So good choice for the Knicks, and we'll see how he performs in the big city. Robinson, that's good. And, and guys, it's going to take something very good from the D to stop him from that range, and that was not going to get it done. Now, here's Rogier. Nine points last game. Brown dishes to Morris. Shot clock at six. The Celtics need to get a shot off. No good from outside. And I thought that was going to drop. It looked good from here. Here's Robinson and finished off by Robinson. So many different offenses that Tim Hardaway Jr. has played in, but he's trying to improve in his on-court awareness. A good show of it there. Now, here's Rogier. Burke covering. And the wide-open shot for Morris. That three off the mark. Knicks trail by three. 
inside and stolen by Horford. Now here's Rogier, Burke covering, and Trey Burke gets the whistle that time. That's his first foul. Horford against Robinson. Hits the jumper in space. And the Celtics lead by five. Well, if big men were yachts, Al Horford is that luxury item. He could space the floor and knock shots down. And the Knicks decide to take their first time out here. First chance of the season for them to go up against this Celtics team. Two division rivals facing off tonight. They'll see one another four times this season. All right, let's check out the stats for Hardaway. Some last season stats for him. Last year averaged 17 points a game, four rebounds, and two assists. And he's really been pulling his weight. He's had a hand in some big plays here recently. I think you look across the board right now, and he's just doing a much better job. The numbers bear that out. And it's sent back by Horford. Al Horford positioning himself perfectly and swats that shot away. Celtics leading by five. Rozier kicks to Morris. Back to Rozier. Here's Tice. It's only defending. Well, I like the shot selection. I don't like the shot result. Won't happen much. Down low, Robinson. Al Horford with the rebound. Horford's got rebound number five here tonight. Now on the play, basket counts, so it'll be a three-point play chance. What a play there. The hoop plus the harm. Aaron Baines, he's checked in for the Celtics. And if there was ever a guy who was more than what his stats say, it's Al Horford. Won't have nights where he drops 50 or carries a team with a shot blocking, but you ask anyone he's played with, and they'll tell you he is a perfect teammate. Hardaway, and then Hardaway with the dunk. Tim Hardaway Jr. is just a tremendous athlete. He spots a great route to the rim and doesn't settle. The Celtics have gone 4 of 10 in the second quarter from the field. And that's out of bounds. Boston will retain possession. Zinkis, he's checked in for New York. Stolen by Robinson. Oh, and here comes Porzingis all alone. So Porzingis can post you up. He can face you up. He can penetrate from outside. This kid is impressive. Boston leading by four. And the big men who compete against Horford have nothing but respect for him, Greg. Well, it, it is why he's been selected as an all-star by his peers and, and, and why guys like M.B. admire his game. I mean, Horford does all the small things on the floor you need as a big man. He's so humble. He, he just goes about his game and makes his team better in every facet. Hardaway, no good. Boston's gone 0-2 from deep here in the second. Morris passes to Horford. Rozier with the ball. Picked by Horford. Down to five on the shot clock. Rozier kicks to Morris. From deep three-point range. Doesn't go that time. Now the Knicks take it the other way. And that'll be the first of a two-game road trip for him. Burke, the pass to Nilekina. Back to Burke, and it's going to be a three-second call. Ennis Canner's checked in for Robinson. Gordon Hayward's checked in for Boston. Irving comes in for Terry Rozier. Irving double team, and we're going to have a jump ball. It's tied up there. And Boston has possession. The kick out to Brown. Jacks up a three. Bangs home the trifecta. Brown's got five points in the quarter. Great to see Brown drop that perimeter jumper, showing off his terrific stroke from beyond the arc. Neely Kina passes to Persingas. High quality look, and he sinks it. Persingas has got 14 points. The defense not putting up any fight on the inside. They've allowed 10 straight points in the paint. Now here's Irving. Burke covering. 
11 feet away. The putback controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. And the Celtics lead by seven. And those second chance points really become almost like bonus points when you can get them. Now, here's Cantor. He picked up 18 points in the last win against Brooklyn. And his rebounding was solid in that effort as well. He did a lot of work on the glass. All around, it, just his effort level was off the charts. Oh, you just relish those kind of opportunities. And the defense got lucky, but they need to guard that area of the floor a little bit better. And it's coming easy for them right now. Five baskets in a row in the paint. Outside Irving. Over Hardaway. That's good. He's five for nine. So, so clever. He finds different ways to probe inside and Kyrie with a great finish. They set the screen. Yep, it counts. Birch got his first two points of the night. And defensively, you've got to make a greater effort working over the screens. Yeah, it's a bit of a lazy play right there. You're hoping that the guy misses the shot without really doing your job in challenging it. Well, after getting off to a great start, hitting those first two shots, he's definitely regressed a little bit in this quarter. Here's Brown. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. And the vertical that Brown has is pretty impressive. As relentless a finisher as you'll find in our league. And Jalen Brown was giving quite the compliment on his game from Draymond Green, who felt, Greg, that Brown was good enough to be an all-star. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know if I'd be fully on board with that assessment in terms of last year, but I do think he's well on his way to becoming an all-star. His scoring and offensive impact continues to grow each year, and he's shown a great knack on the defensive side as well. Terrific two-way player. The sky is the limit. That free throw good from Brown. A different look for New York. Knox, he's checked in for Tim Hardaway Jr. Lee comes in for Frank Nilekina. And Emmanuel Moutier subbed in for Trey Burke. Boston also with the sub. Tatum's checked in. That one misses, so he goes one for two. Brent, we're seeing a number of superstars sign shorter contracts with early opt-outs. Why have we seen that trend? Well, I think in some of those cases, the players are knowing that the opportunity for a, a larger cap in the successive years, they want the opportunity to maximize their earning potential. So seeing a Kevin Durant or a LeBron James sign a one-year deal or a one-plus-one, it gives them the opportunity to cash in a year later for the type of contract that they deserve, the maximum contract allowed. And really, the defense fouling there to the prevent the layup, but that's exactly what you need to do. For New York, they have shot four of seven as a team from the line tonight. Several misses early. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. The first one falls. Smart's checked in for Brown. And so he makes both from the line. Boston leading by four. Now a timeout called by Boston. Yeah, I mean, it's an opportunity to kind of regroup and, and discuss ways to maximize these possessions. Yeah, and therein lies the trick, discussing ways to be aggressive but not committing turnovers. And checking out some numbers for Irving. He's coming off an excellent season seventh in free throw percentage and of course he was among the best in the league when it came to putting the ball in the basket top 10 in scoring and again you gotta love his commitment to excellence he owns the free throw line it's truly an impact part of his game 
Now here's Irving. It's good, and it's his sixth make against 11 attempts. Yeah, I feel like he uses the dribble to set up his rhythm for the mid-range shots like that one. Kyrie knocks another in. Porzingis kicks to Moody. Out of bounds, Boston takes possession. Well, while we have a second, let's go to the 2K leaderboard for a list of the league's top shooters from last season. Fifth on the list, and it's cancer. Put the ball in the bucket. I mean, that's the name of the game, right? I mean, just ask him. He'll have the answer for you. Passes it to Tatum. Hayward outside. To the inside. It's rebounded by New York. Cantor's got double-digit rebounds now in the game. Rozingas with the steal. Now you can see the defense is so shifted over to where Kristaps Porzingis is that they lose track of the situation and he burns them with the pass. Celtics leading by four. Outside Irving. Pass to Baines. And the shot goes in. Baines has got four points this quarter. The Knicks shooting at an even 50% from the floor here in the second quarter. Houdier passes to Persingas. There's the pick. And a wide open look for Lee. Nice teamwork to set up the pick play and make the space for the J. And good passing. Setting up a lot of these buckets right now, Kevin. That's been the key. Austin's gone 1-6 from three-point land in the second quarter. Less than 20% but they've continued to let him fly. Irving kicks to Tatum. We've got 148 left here in the second. Now here's Moutier. He's tightly guarded. The pass to Persingas and stolen by Tatum. In the corner, it's Hayward. Hits it from three-point range. Hayward's got seven points. And Tatum is all about doing what's best for the team. Superb as a ball mover in terms of finding his teammates. Now here's Porzingis. 29 points for him last game against Brooklyn. I'm not sure in that game if it was him or Dikembe Mutombo out there, guys. I was just hoping to see one finger wave after one of those four blocks. No, no, no. Not today. Offensive rebound. Tatum got a piece of it. And here's Kanter. He has five. There's 45 seconds left to play in the first half. Here's Persingis over Tatum. Shot clock at six. And that one, good. And that's 18 points for Persingis. Persingis playing with some heart now, never giving up or into the defense, muscling through that difficult shot. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. Well, for so long, so many were wondering what Kyrie was thinking when he left Cleveland. What is clear now, though, is that Irving doesn't think about it and has flourished on his own. It seems that he really did just need his own team to become the player he's become. Free throw good from Kyrie Irving. Shifty with his speed. Incredible ball handling. So hard to guard Kyrie. But so thrilling to sit here and watch it all up close. Robinson's checked in for New York. As Anya comes in for Persingas. And the Celtics also making a change. Daniel Tice is checked in for Aaron Baines. Now here's Moutier. Looking for his first basket still in this one. As Anya's shot is off. Now Irving, Hayward on the wing. Boston again missing. There's Lee with the three, drills it from outside. Lee's got seven now in this quarter. Good to see Lee remain aggressive on offense. There are times when he floats out there, but right now, aiming for points. And the first half comes to a conclusion in a game that has been very close so far. Celtics lead by four. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thanks a lot. Kyrie, what were you all focusing on coming into the game tonight? 
got to come out with a, you know, intense focus and intensity that, you know, other teams can't match. Just doing whatever it takes to, you know, keep our tempo. Um, you know, guys are in a, in a great rhythm when we have a great tempo. So just trying to get everybody involved and do whatever it takes to win. Well, we'll see if you can keep playing at your pace in the second half. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. And we'll be right back after halftime to start the third quarter. See you in just a bit. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. We welcome you back. Ernie Johnson with Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith. Quite the tussle there in the first half, huh? Kyrie Irving was red hot to start the first. He ended up with 17 points and two steals. Kenny, what's your take on Boston so far? Efficiency. You know, I think that's big. That's a key to success. You got to protect the basketball. You can't make those risky passes that lead to highlight film dunks. So I thought it was a great job. Shaq, what did you think about New York? I like the way they rebounded. They devoted a lot of energy down low, fighting for each other on the boards, and they helped keep this game tight. If they can continue to do that, it could easily be the factor that swings the game in their favor. And that'll do it for us. The third quarter about to begin with Kevin Harlan standing by. We'll catch you on the flip side. My brother. And it's been a back and forth game so far with no ground given through the first half. Third quarter starting here now. And it's been a clinic out there by Kristaps Porzingis. And through the first two quarters, they went to him repeatedly in the post. And boy, did he deliver. Yeah, I like his patience down there. He's combined some good footwork with even better moves surrounding that. So we'll see if the defense can counter in the second half. Maybe some double teams. The second half about to get underway, and it's been a close one so far. Knicks trail by four. And now let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade all fueled up and ready to go for the second half of basketball. On the court for the Knicks. Inside, it's Porzingis and Cantor. Burke is out there with Neil Aquino, and it's Hardaway in at the small forward. One of the game's very best offensive rebounders, Cantor also has the wherewithal to quickly convert for the score. And the dunk by Horford. And that's how it's done. I mean, find <laughs> that hole in the D and then go hard to the rack. Maybe that hole was a little bigger than it should have been. But especially in a game that is this close, every possession counting, that was just one side wanting it more than the other. Austin leading by four. Shoots from the line. Porzingis with the block. And with his length, Porzingis can be very disruptive on D. Not easy to get the shot off over that huge frame. And he can time his passes so perfectly. Wow, what an assist. The Knicks have gone six of nine at the line. That's good from Cantor. Well, Cantor is so hungry and has the desire to be an impact player on the glass every night. A very good low post scorer who can rebound at a high level. And there's the foul. It'll go on Frank Nilikina. That's his first foul. Porzingis with the steal. Here's Neil Aquino. He's covered by Brown. It's tipped and stolen by Horford. Outside Irving. Made that one. It's his seventh of the contest. Seven for 15 from the floor. It feels like he's taking nothing but shots. He knows he's going to knock down Kyrie playing sharp here. And we've got an update here, so let's catch up with David Aldridge. Well, the Knicks hope to build a contender around their star player, Kristaps Porzingis. He said, playoff experience would be huge at this point in my career. The sooner, the better. That's the only thing I'm focused on. What I need to do on the court to play better, make my team win. Kevin will see if they can get there together. Thanks, DA. And here is Burke. 
following the three-pointer by Kyrie Irving. Tatum against Porzingis. And Horford wide open. He shoots. Misses the three. And that's a rare sight. Usually shooters make the defense pay when they're that lackadaisical. Here's Persingas. Jacks up a three. Burke can't get it to go. And the foul called on Tim Hardaway Jr. That is his first foul of the game. Celtics leading by four. Hayward passes to Irving. Puts it up from 12. Count the basket. Irving's got 24 points. The Knicks have gone 3 of 6 in the third quarter. 50% from the field. Burke kicks to Porzingis. To the inside. Cantor. Horford with the rebound. For Boston, they've gone 4 of 6 from the field since the start of the third. Down low. Here's Tatum. Nice D from Porzingis. The Knicks shooting 47%. Pretty solid. Here's Hardaway. New York, no good that time either. Austin's gone one of two from beyond the arc since coming out of the break. Takes the 13-footer. Nice touch on the bank shot. Hayward's got the lead up to eight now for the Celtics. This is the kind of guy that you wake up in a cold sweat the night before you play him. Just a matchup nightmare. Tricky, confident, and he takes on all comers. And there it is for him. 22 points for him. Now this is where Porzingis can do the most damage. Seven foot three. He's got the height. He's going to shoot over just about anybody in the league. Celtics leading by six. Outside Irving. To the middle. Horford, no luck. One thing we've seen from these guys is excellent passing. No doubt about it. It's fun to watch the way they're operating as a team right now. They are all in sync. Yeah, and something we always talk about, though, shot selection. Well, being aggressive is one thing, but aggression with control Mark. is another. And you need both elements working together. Marcus Morris has checked in for Boston. Terry Rozier comes in for Gordon Hayward. Time called here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. As the teams head into this timeout, a chance for the coaches now to map out some plays for the next few minutes and a chance for the players to rehydrate with some Gatorade. That's important if they want to make sure they don't wear down later in the game. Absolutely. Over the course of a game, you have to stay hydrated. Irving kicks to Horford, and Ennis Kanter picks up the foul. And that'll be his third foul so far. Yeah, clearly struggling here with the foul. Still early. And just one more will put him over the limit. And it's Brown missing. And the defense is just not very aggressive. Definitely fortunate that the mid-range jumper did not find the bottom of the net that time. Hardaway passes to Neely Kina. Count it. Neely Kina's got his third basket of the night. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. Irving dishes to Brown. Back to Irving for the three. The shot's good. Brown making the play. 27 points for Kyrie Irving. Yeah, it's one of the more dangerous shots. The form, the quick release, everything for Kyrie in sync. Porzingis kicks to Burke. Out to the right wing. And Cantor wide open. He shoots. And that one's on target from the wing. And, and just a step ahead of the D in that possession there. Making the pass. Nice assist. Moore is a screen. Three-pointer. Horford no luck. Knicks trail by five. Here's Burke. Knocks it loose. And stolen by Horford. And now here's Rozier, the fast break chance. Brown, good. And that's just tremendous confidence from Brown. Going up with the shot right away and giving the D no time to react. Now here's Burke. There's a screen by Canner. Pass to Hardaway. New York moving the ball around. Porzingis kicks to Neely Kina. Six to shoot. Let's it go from 14. And he can't bank that one in. Celtics leading by seven. Nobody near Irving. And the lead now, double digits on that bucket. 
Irving's got 30 points. Three-point shooting since the half has been about as good as you could ask for. Here's Burke, and he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. The Knicks have made seven free throws and missed three in this game. He's off on the first. Game is so wide open now, Brent. Such a great pace. Does that put more strain on, on bigger players? Physically. I think it's putting strain on everybody. Yeah. I think last year we saw... Uh, Regardless of size. Yeah, injuries yeah. To, to every position. Mm -hmm. The key guys at every position. I think that some of the, the physical motions that players have to perform in games because they're covering more ground and in susceptible positions, it's happening to everybody. The issue with the big guys, Kevin, is they're not playing. Less of them are getting more important time on the floor. So it's a, it's a strain on everybody. Smart. And not a good shot for him. They can get better looks than that. Down low. Lee with the steal. And a fast break now for the Knicks. Lee's running. Hazania's shot is off. Austin leading by nine. And the ball travels out of bounds. It was last touched by Smart. And a chance here to take a look at the shooting chart for Irving. This is the shot chart of a dominant performance. I mean, he's taken a lot of shots because right now he believes that every shot he does take is going in. And, and who can blame him? But the way he's played, simply outstanding work coming from him. Here's Knox. Five points in the game. Here's Robinson. Second shot opportunity. And it's good on the way up. Robinson's got six. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Smart kicks to Tice. Over in the corner, Rogier. Smart on the wing. Over Lee. Boston. No good that time either. Knicks trail by seven. Here's Knox. In the corner, it's Robinson to the left wing. Here's Knox, covered by Morris. Again and again, they're dissecting the defense and creating those high percentage looks from inside. Celtics leading by five. Orford high post. There's a screen. Back to Rogier. Horford sets a screen for Rogier. Robinson with the block, and he gets it back. Horford, no luck. And yeah, you just get the sense the whole period he's been a bit out of sync. Yeah, sometimes you just can't figure out what's wrong, but he keeps trying to push through. Now, here's Rogier. They get it back. Horford, the pass to Rogier. Robinson against Horford. Back to Rogier. Horford with a screen on Robinson. Here's Rogier. Lands soft on the front of the rim and drops. Five points in the game. To leave a guy like that wide open from range, big mix up. Time call here. The Knicks decide to talk it over. And Kevin, they've been committing a lot of turnovers here. Taking care of the basketball is the number one priority right now in that huddle. They've got to tighten it up. The Knicks making a switch here. Moutier is checked in, and the Celtics also making a change. Aaron Baines, he's checked in for Al Horford. Passes it to Knox. Hizonia kicks to Moutier. And the Knicks miss again. Trying to shoot his way out of this slump, but thus far, not working. Yeah, I hope it hasn't gone to his head. He may be trying too hard at this point. Like the tactics on defense there, refusing to give the shooter the easy layup at the rim. Hazania, no good on that one. Now the Celtics take it the other way. They've led by as much as 10. This game coming on the heels of their win against Toronto. And you know what? Up against a weak defense, they were allowed to do pretty much whatever they wanted. Yeah, what I like, though, besides that, is that they just didn't settle for it because weak defenses, you could take bad shots. That's not what they did here tonight. Boston leading by five. Here's the screen.
Smart up top, covered by Lee. Four on the clock. Baines. Got a piece of it. Lee picks to Moody over Rozier. It's rebounded by Tice. Tice has got his fourth rebound in this one. Just a little lackluster so far with his effort. He's been very limited due to his poor shooting. And the basket by Rozier. Commending the unselfish play there. What vision on that pass. Here's Moutier. 132 left in the third quarter. And no doubt that Marcus Smart is one of the better defenders at his position. Quick feet are complemented by that strong frame. And he just digs in and, and against would-be scorers and just never lets them get comfortable. Here's Tice following the basket by Emmanuel Moody. They set the pick. Tice kicks to Morris. Shot clock at five. This one for three. The Knicks pull it in. The feed to Lee. The basket good off the assist from Moody. And now just a three-point Boston lead. The Celtics shooting 37% so far in the third quarter. And they're not satisfied with this lack of offensive execution. Now here's Smart inside. Morris left side. Hits the three-point bomb. Morris has got his second bucket of the night. And you can see the play calling this half. Another one from distance. Yeah, no question. It looks like they've rented out room along the perimeter in this ball game, And they're likely to keep doing this until the defense makes an adjustment. Here's Lee. Nine points in the game so far. It falls for his fifth field goal tonight. Now shooting five for eight. Courtney Lee as a as two guard can get physical and I love that he didn't back down on that possession. Zellicks have been coming through at the charity strike. They've made seven of their eight attempts. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And that one falls for Smart. The Celtics making a switch here. He doesn't get the second one. Lee picks to Moody Over Rozier. Tried to bank it in, but he misses. And the call will be against Emmanuel Moody. That's his third foul so far. Bonus situation in effect, so we'll head to the free throw line for two. That's also good. So he hits both free throws. And so it's the Boston Celtics heading to the bench with a seven-point lead as we wrap up the quarter. They've had active hands and have forced a lot of turnovers in this one. And we'll be back with you shortly. And it's time now to bring you our State Farm assist of the game. And he sliced the D wide open with this feed. They had no chance to prevent that basket. And that's what great passing will do for you right there, dissecting the defense with that play. Three quarters in the books, folks. Glad to have you with us. Welcome back as we get going. And a look at the five for the Celtics to start the fourth quarter. They've got Marcus Smart. Tatum out there with Hugh. Then it's Aaron Baines. And it's Rozier in at the point. Here's a look at what's coming up for New York. On Monday, they'll be matching up against Eric Bledsoe and the Milwaukee Bucks. And then on Wednesday, they'll be facing Hassan Whiteside and the Miami Heat. And for that game against the Warriors, uh, this is what the fans have been wanting to see. Two of the best teams in the league duking it out, and, and you know whoever gets the win is going to be viewed as the team to beat. Here's Lee. After Gordon Hayward's bucket, Lee passes to Robinson to the right side. 
Here's Knox. Robinson kicks to Moody. New York moving the ball around. Down to five on the shot clock. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. What's interesting about Moutier is how cavernous the gap is uh, between the strengths and weaknesses that he has. On the plus side, he creates shots for himself, but how many of those shots is he actually going to make? Uh, the other part about his game, though, is his distribution is pretty solid. So if he plays in the pick and roll, he can find teammates. Catching up on the changes for New York. For Zinkis, he's checked in for Knox. And it's Nilakina in for Lee. Brown is checked in for Boston. Kyrie Irving comes in for Terry Rozier. All free throws good for Moutier. Another thing about Moutier, really good on-ball defender. That marks him. Well, a better defender when his man's in front of him. Uh, not as good at chasing guys through screens. He seems to either get bumped off route or try to take shortcuts that, that cost him. But offensively is where it is he needs to just be better at decision-making and, and get that jump shot to be more consistent. Yeah, easy call. A different look for New York. Cantor is checked in for Robinson. Hardaway is subbed in for Perzingis. First one falls for him. And one of the problems in the first half, that shoddy work at the free throw line. They needed to fix that, and they've been much improved since the break. And so he's able to get one of two. Boston leading by six. Brown wide open. He fired. Had the opportunity on the break, but couldn't sink the three. He's been a little bit disappointing in this game. However, his team has his back. They need a little bit more help from him. Moutier passes to Hardaway. The basket good off the assist from Moutier. Moutier's got three assists now in this one. The Celtics have gone 1 of 4 since the end of the third quarter. Irving dishes to Hayward. Kicks it to Baines. Pass to Irving. In the corner, Tatum with it. Shot off the screen. Good as the jump shot falls. And there's another aspect of his game, the ability to work off the screen. Give this guy any kind of space, and he's going to torch you. Now, here's Cantor. And there's the pass to Hazania. Puts it up from 15, and he tries off the glass, but it's no good. Celtics have gone two for five on field goal attempts in the fourth quarter. Tatum kicks to Irving. Brown outside. Back to Irving. That three off the mark. And he didn't punish them for the weak coverage there, but they can't count on him to continue missing. Tatum trying to break free. They get it back. And he makes that one. Cantor's got nine points now in just the second half. They've cashed in on a lot of second chance opportunities here in the second half. That extra effort will help them cut into this deficit. Now here's Hayward. To the paint. And it's thrown down hard with both hands. Ooh. Oh, inflicting some punishment with the two-hand flush. Ah, they're going for the throat. Here's Nilakina. He's covered by Brown. It'll go. The Boston lead is cut to just three points on the basket for Moutier. Yeah, certainly an attitude change at halftime after sort of wandering around in the first. He's kicked it into gear here for the second frame. And it's time for an injury report. Let's check in with David Aldridge for an injury update on Porzingis. David. Hi, guys. The head athletic trainer from New York gave us some information. 
It's not what anyone wanted to hear as it sounds like it's a severe injury. That is a bitter pill for them to swallow so early in the season. It clearly changes the look of this team going forward, Kevin. All right, David, thanks. Well, guys, certainly not the news his fans were hoping for. And not at all. I mean, it sounds like he's got a long road ahead of him in terms of his recovery. Yeah, and this makes it particularly rough for this team. Other teammates now are going to have to step up, and it seems like it's going to be an extended period of time, so not easy to do. And, boy, have they been hitting the backboard in this game or what? Kind of surprising it's such a tight game. Hardaway, no good. For Boston, they've gotten only three of their nine field goal attempts to go down since the end of the third. Pretty cold down the stretch. Here's Baines. Oh, and that one, no question, powered it down. Oh, and he went for the two-hander on the slam using some muscle. Some urgency from him there, sure. Cantor sets the pick for Moutier. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. And still trying to find his footing in the league. Moutier must show improvement in his shooting moving forward. No good on the free throw. Zinkis, he's checked in for New York. Al Horfer, he's checked in for Boston. And he sinks the second. Yeah, being down two points instead of one, thanks to the free throw miss, makes getting a stop here absolutely critical. There's a good screen. Tatum kicks to Irving. Nilakina with the rebound. New York trailing. Just to Persingas and taken away by Brown. Stolen by Cantor. Nilakina passes to Cantor. Here's Nilakina. Cantor with it. Here's Moutier, and it's off the back rim. No good. Boston's gone 0-3 so far in the fourth quarter from long range. Hayward can hit. Knicks have gone 4 of 8 in this fourth quarter, shooting an even 50% from the field. And here's Przingis for a three. He's still up. Now he is 9 of 10. Yeah, I don't think you have to tell Przingis twice to take shots like that. Once the ball's in his hands, he's looking to the rim. Irving kicks to Horford. Hit the floater. Excellent D from Cantor. New York with the ball. They're on a 16-6 run. To the paint. Good work defensively by Horford. And forcing the miss there. He just knows how to pressure you defensively. You hear a lot about rim protection. This is a good example of how valuable it can be. And guys, here in the fourth quarter, still a close game. Instant classic, fellas. This one could come right down to the last shot. There's a screen by Kanner. Nila Kina can't hit. Well executed. Great rhythm. You've got to finish that one. Well, it's like Thanksgiving out there. Carving out space off the screen. Just couldn't complete the play. Here's Moutier. Jason Tatum picking up that last basket. Now, here's Moutier. He's covered closely. And just a better job of getting to the line here in the second half. Didn't get there once in the first. First free throw is good. And he can't hit the second. The Celtics with the lead. They push it up. Four on three. Out to the right wing. New York moving the ball around. Yep, that one goes. 
And that's now 27 points for Perzingis. Precision pass from Moutier to get his teammate a good look there. Now a timeout called by Boston. It's been quite a game for Perzingis. Yeah, I know the defense has five guys, but collectively they're no match for this guy. He is roasting them. A chance now to recognize our Jordan player of the game, Kyrie Irving. And what an amazing ball game we've seen from him. It's been a one-man show worth the price of admission all by itself. There wasn't anything he couldn't do on that court tonight. Trey Burks checked in for New York. And let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Hey, Kevin. Well, look, here's what Brad Stevens went over with his guys during the break. And he's pushing them to empty the tank. He said, I know you're tired and it's been a tough game, but we can't hold back. If you're tired, come out. Otherwise, I want you full speed. Guys. Knicks trail by three. Inside. Here's Persingas. And the shot goes down. Persingas has got seven now in this quarter. Well, you see the excellent skill set. And this is when you want to make an impact. And I feel like there's an uptick in the intensity as well. Fourth quarter, and it's closing time. And now the Knicks on the break. Hardaway with it. Picked up by Brown. Neela Kina can't hit. Boston's gotten just one of four three-pointers to go down for them here in the fourth. Hayward can't hit. New York's gone two or three in the fourth quarter from long range. Good shooting so far. Burke dishes to Hardaway. Outside, Brzingis. Six on the shot clock. Here's Burke. And he banks in the layup. And the Knicks lead by one. Interior D lacking. And it couldn't be at a worse time giving up that easy one. Well, just an incredibly slow rotation. That is someone's responsibility and something they're going to need to discuss. And once he started feeling it, Irving just decided to make it his night. And he's done that in a big way. Cantor with a screen on Irving. Burke, the pass to Cantor. The shot comes out. Great D that time from Tatum. And Ennis Cantor picks up the foul. That's his fourth foul of the contest. The Celtics shooting around 41% on the night. Outside Tatum shoots the three. The shot's good on the assist by Horford. Horford's got three assists in the game. Hardaway kicks to Cancer. Passes to Hardaway. There's the three. It's hauled in by Brown. Brown's got his fifth rebound in this one. He seems to be forcing just a little bit out there. He needs to play a little calmer, a little smarter, with a little bit more poise if they're going to win this one. Hayward dishes to Irving. Back to Hayward. And another shot. It's rebounded by New York. Persingas has got rebound number 10 tonight with that last one. Just not there from a rhythm standpoint right now. It's really eluding him. Now here is Hardaway. Here's Mila Kina. Sinks the 15-footer. Mila Kina's got four this quarter. How about the fearlessness in the moment? Mila Kina demonstrating great control and decision-making during these crucial possessions. Well, after an impressive first half, he's just not been able to get the room or get anything going here in the second. And pushing it up, here's Boston. Brown's got the ball. Outside Hardaway. He dishes it to Cantor. Up top, Burke, covered by Irving. Cantor, the pass to Nilekina. And it's going to be a 24-second shot clock violation. They turn it over. Not sure. Maybe the pressure of the moment got to him there. A really careless error that might ultimately cost the team. Outside Irving. He kicks it to Brown. Left side Tatum. The shot's good. Brown making the play. And the Celtics lead by four. And let's give some credit to Tatum. Doesn't crack when the pressure's on. He just seems to embrace the moment. 
Here's Persingas. Count the basket and the foul. It goes on Jason Tatum. Porzingis warning it and gets it. That free throw good from Porzingis. And how big was that? He is just so reliable, so confident at the free throw line. A step back shot here. No good from Irving. And they're in position to take the lead. And how big would a bucket be at this stage of the game? You had a foul to give there, but you'd rather not have it cost your team points. For his free throw, missing for him. We'll see if he can nail the second. And the French native has already made an impact. Nila Kina is a young guard who plays with confidence and purpose. Oh, shocking there. That, that one's amazing. Well, you play your heart out all night long, and then just one or two shots at the end decide the outcome. Now a timeout called by Boston. They're down by one. 46 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Forty three seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. Here's Irving. Count it. Well, Kyrie's resume in these kind of moments is full. Guys, this possession could decide their fate. Uh, they have to be careful with the ball. Porzingis against Tatum. Porzingis kicks to Burke. It's stolen by Brown and an intentional foul right there. And so they choose to intentionally foul. Yeah, you, you have to do that, though. You can't just let them dribble the game. So the first one drops, and that will put them up by two. And the confidence Irving plays with is really admirable. You, you can tell he feels like no one can guard him. Huge free throws. Bumps the lead up to three, and now they simply have to guard against the three ball. New York calls timeout. They trail by three. There's 21 seconds left in the fourth quarter. What do you think, guys? You know, you'd love to be able to clear space and get that triple, but you can also do the two with a quick foul. Well, it really depends on what's available, so we'll see how the defense lines up here. And now they foul and stop the clock. You have to foul, but I'm sure they would have liked to foul someone different. And so he drops them both. It's a five-point game. Clutch, clutch free throws there. That should ensure they're going home with the W. New York calls timeout. They're trailing by five. Twelve seconds left in the fourth. Hardaway kicks to Neely Kina. Laces one from three. An average threat from beyond the arc. Neely Kina needs to keep working on that part of his game. Now a timeout called by Boston. They're up by two. Six seconds left to play here in the fourth. Five seconds left in the game. And they need to stop the clock, so there's a foul. He drops the first one, and that makes it a three-point lead. Second one is good. Bring both at the line, and it's a four-point ball game. From deep, off target. And so it's Boston scraping by with the win. This was a hard-fought, well-earned victory for him, Greg. They really had to work for this win. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, well, weaker teams might have buckled at the end with the crowd amped up, everyone in the building kind of rooting against you. But they stood tall and, and pulled it out. Well said. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. 
All right, Dave. Thanks very much. Kyrie, big numbers for you tonight. And I always wonder what it's like to be in a zone like that offensively. It feels amazing. Uh, you know, more importantly, we got the win, and I couldn't have done it without my teammates. They did a heck of a job of competing every uh, every single minute of this game. It took everybody's effort from our bench. You know, it took a 15-man effort, and I'm glad we got the win. 15 men, but one man was a difference. Thanks, Kyrie. Back to you, Kevin. David, thank you as always. And that'll do it, folks. For Greg Anthony, Brett Berry, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Thank you for watching the NBA presented by 2K Sports. We'll see you next time.